Lawyers, what's a case you regretted winning? I'm a work comp attorney, now represent injured people, but used to work on other side insurance defense. There was an applicant with a serious injury, fell off a ladder, busted back with fusion, shoulders screwed. Years of treatment, internal issues, psych issues, really just messed up. 50% plus permanent disability. We were five years in and finally getting to settlement time. If we bought out his future medical settlement pretty far into six figures, this guy was the sole provider for a wife and two kids. Then we found out he had aggressive brain cancer, expected only a couple of years to live at best. Thus, we wouldn't buy out future medical anymore. Still got permanent disability for 60k ish, but can't give medical buyout based on 25 plus year life expectancy anymore. I felt terrible for the guy and his family. Me and the adjuster tried to get insurance to agree to some sort of amount like five year buyout, but the bean counter said hell no. The attorney knew it wasn't me making the decision. Even though he worked on that guy's file for five plus years, he decided to take zero dollars in fees. I have so much respect for that attorney turning down 10k plus in fees to help his client in a very crappy situation. Yeah, I can't lie, if I were a lawyer on the other side of that, I'd probably be laying awake at night thinking about that guy and his family. And clearly this guy does. I do family law and I represented a father who had lost most of his custody from illegal substance use and imprisonment as a result. He came to me saying he was clean and doing good and had his life together and it checked out. He had been clean for almost nine months, not counting jail time, and seemed sincere in wanting to resume a full relationship with his son. The other side fought viciously to keep him in extremely little custody and supervised at that, but we prevailed and got an order restoring family frequent unsupervised partial custody. Today. Not long afterwards, only about three months after the case, he was back to doing illegal substances, sold most of his furniture, and for me the most soul-crushing is that he set up a fake GoFundMe stuff for his child's cancer. His child didn't have cancer and has never had cancer, so you know where that money was going. I withdrew my appearance at this point, so I don't know what happened afterwards, but I imagine and hope his custody was taken away. Basically, the net result of winning that case was that the poor boy had to witness his father relapse onto illegal substances and was exploited for money. Worst case I ever won. I work in medical malpractice defense. Once I had an obstetrician or gynecologist who burned a patient during a procedure. When I met with the doctor, he lied to me throughout the representation over 16 months, saying he had no idea how it happened. There is a doctrine in law called res ipsa, meaning absent some sort of negligence. This accident could not have occurred. Woman came in without a burn, and after the procedure, the woman left with a burn. There's no way this doctor didn't know what had happened. The area of the burn was where he was operating on. It wasn't until I brought up settlement, because this was not a case we could win, did he say, oh, maybe I do know what happened. We ultimately settled that case, which is considered a favorable outcome considering the potential high monetary verdict. Sometimes I think this doctor really ought to have lost that case and their license. I wouldn't say I regret this so much as to this day it amazes me. As a first year associate, I was given a terrible PI case where my client received a flu shot and thereafter felt pain in his shoulder. He went to another doctor who performed an MRI and determined he had a torn rotator cuff, which was undoubtedly not related. My job was to allege the flu shot caused the rotator cuff tear. Our author actually correlated the two, which is the more regrettable position, and the case paid out. Being the bottom of the totem pole, I had no choice but to take the case, which was handed down by a partner, but at the same time just overwhelmingly made me feel like the worst stereotyped attorney and just hated having to walk into court on it and feel my reputation being destroyed. I'm just picturing this dude walking and calling me like, Your Honor, I feel offended because this is just so stereotypical evil lawyer. I don't want to be that guy. Is it fair that I go through years of school and training to get to this specific job only to be stereotyped so callously? I do juvenile work, criminal law and family law. I represented this client first when he was a juvenile charged with disorderly conduct at school and fighting. Then, when he became an adult, it was for simple things like possession of the devil's less. As he got older, it became easier and easier to figure out what part of his life hasn't gone as well as it could, and I tried to counsel him and push him to better himself. 
He got his GED, he started going to NA, he started classes at a community college and found a part-time job. On the night of his 21st birthday, he was charged with a DWI. Of course, I'll take care of that too. About six months later, we are due in for court for a trial on a Monday, and he doesn't show up, which at this point in his life is highly unusual. As I'm trying to figure out where he is, the court starts going over arraignments, first appearances, and then, lo and behold, three people are up for murder charges. The prosecution starts to tell the judge what the facts and circumstances of the case are and mentions a few victims' names. Apparently, my client was at a party when these three individuals decided to allegedly do a drive-by. My client suffered from multiple wounds and didn't make it to the hospital. So, by default, as you can't prosecute a dead person, the state has to take a dismissal. I guess technically a win. Either way, it was crushing to me as I thought he had really turned his life around. As a personal injury attorney, I've seen a few clients with the blue-collar lotto or getting more money than they reasonably know how to deal with. I do my best to educate them, but my job is to try and maximize their recovery, not to teach them finance, and I have definitely contributed to a few illegal substance habits. In one of my first cases after passing the bar exam, a young man retained me on a drunk driving charge. No one was hurt, but he totaled his car. During trial, the arresting police officer testified that my client was clearly drunk at the accident scene and that my client was loudly blaming the accident on a freaking butthole who stole his car, crashed it, and then fled before the cops arrived. However, according to the two other witness statements tendered into evidence, it was my client's friend, the passenger, who was screaming about the butthole who stole the car, not my client, the driver. The cop must have confused the two men during his testimony. This discrepancy raised a reasonable doubt in the judge's mind, so she acquitted my client. At the time, the acquittal was somewhat unexpected for me. In my personal view, my client was clearly drunk and responsible for the accident, regardless of who was blaming the mystery butthole to the cops. But I was happy my client got off. No one was hurt, and lessons were learned. And I was quite euphoric to have won my first criminal case. The regret? About a month after the acquittal, my young client called me at 3 a.m. from the police station saying, it's me again. The police arrested me for drunk driving again. Can you help me? Not only did I answer no, I instantly regretted getting the earlier acquittal. My client apparently didn't learn any lessons. You can't save everybody. Some people just can't learn a freaking lesson to save their life. I got a spoiled brat of a teenager cleared of a shoplifting charge when he absolutely had done it. His rich parents hired me to represent him. I did that to the best of my ability and and we went to trial and won, but I can't say I felt good about it. This kid needed to be taught some accountability for his actions, and his parents just wanted to buy their way out of any trouble he got into. Had this happened to me twice, got my client out on bail only to thereafter have him up and killed. First time he was in a building, supposedly selling, got chased by the police and a struggle ensued where he was smoked point blank in the head. Mother told me that it was my fault that he was killed and that I was working with the DA and the police. Second time, a young man no more than 16 gets released while waiting trial on robbery. One of the conditions of release was that he was to maintain a curfew. That very night, he breaks curfew, goes over to somebody else's house, and was killed in a illegal substance-related robbery. Mother blamed me and said that the devil was working through me that we were all demons. Criminal defense is a hard business. Did a divorce where the husband, who I was representing, wanted to trade custody of his children for a set of bedroom furniture. The bedroom furniture was not even like a family heirloom. It was furniture that you could probably get at a rooms to go or something. Ugh, still makes me ill. That's why I got out of family law. Law. I'm picturing that father looking up at the judge and saying, Your Honor, I love my children with all my heart, truly, but that furniture means the world to me. I won a summary judgment motion that my firm filed not expecting to win. We had a decent argument, but odds were way worse than a coin flip and judges don't like granting summary judgment because it's an extreme remedy. The client initially was thrilled. Case is over. We tried to break the news gently. Nope. 
Three years later, we're back in the same spot we were before. We won our motion, the other side appealed it up to the state Supreme Court, and won because the Supreme Court said the trial judge should have denied our motion. So we're back at square one, north of $100,000 in illegal bills with no resolution. Maybe it'll settle, maybe it will go to trial. I'll find out in the next three to four months. The one I particularly hated happened at my first law job. This woman was a long-term client of my boss. In the past 10 years or so, she has been caught driving under the influences eight times, violated home incarceration countless times, being caught with controlled substances a few times, and stabbed two people on home incarceration. My boss at the time was the master of getting people off for DUIs, so she had only been convicted of a DUI third and always managed to stay on home incarceration with whatever releases she desired. I always regretted her cases because that woman is truly a danger to the public. She's undoubtedly going to kill someone someday, but I'll be damned if she isn't the luckiest woman alive in getting away with DUIs. A little late to the party, but I've got one I still think about a lot. Worked in criminal defense, represented a guy in a DUI. He had priors, so another conviction meant time, loss of license, problems. Long story short, he was pulled over by police after they followed him leaving a bar. At trial, I elicited admission from the arresting officer that during the 2.5 miles he followed him for, he did not observe a single moving violation. No speeding, erratic driving, driving over the lines, blowing stop signs, running red lights, didn't even stop suddenly at red lights. Also got the DRE officer to testify that the accused only spoke Spanish and they couldn't get interpreter officer to the roadside to explain the field sobriety exercises, which the officer documented the accused refused to perform. Jury came back in 15 minutes. Guy was extremely grateful and his lovely family was very gracious in thanking me and our office. Feel good about the whole thing. A couple months later, I'm in county to meet with a client and I see him in one of the pods. Find out sometime after the trial, he violently and sexually assaulted his stepdaughter. I think about that one a lot. There was this case I saw that involved a claim with free shifting, meaning that if the plaintiff won, their attorney's fees would get paid by the defendant. defendant defendant pushed an aggressive legal position at trial that the judge agreed with and won, avoiding a few thousand in liability to the plaintiff and a few thousand in attorney fees. So far, so good. But then the plaintiff appeals all the way to the state's high court, requiring a ton of briefing and time. High court agrees with plaintiff, reserves and sends back to the trial court, which now enters judgment against the defendant for a few thousand in damages against the plaintiff and tens and tens of thousands of dollars in attorney's fees from the appeal. The defense lawyer probably regretted winning at first on that aggressive argument to the trial court. This is honestly making me realize that court, law and order, all this crap is way more complicated than proving your client's innocence or, you know, the other person's guilt, whatever. I mean, hell, I've always known that you can have a bent jury that are just really one-sided in their opinion on basically whatever the heck they want to feel like on any given thing, whether it be race, politics, or anything of the sort, sympathy even. God, I would hate to be a lawyer. This probably won't be the best answer, but this is a real one. After law school, I had to turn down a criminal defense job offer because my wife got a better offer somewhere else. So basically, I followed her along and was desperate to find something after three months of fruitless efforts. I would take just about any job that required a JD, whereas literally the only thing I ever wanted to do was criminal defense. Three months after moving, I got an interview for a real estate litigation job. They hired me the next day. Looking back, that was probably red flag number one. First day on the job, they taught me how to foreclose on a claim line. These are two things I had never heard of before. Turns out it is totally brainless work if you have the right forms. Mine numbingly boring, basically just cutting and pasting new addresses and amounts owed. So anyways, it took me about two months to realize this when I had my first set of hearings. But literally my sole purpose at the firm, which represented over a hundred homeowners associations, was to take people's houses away for not paying their homeowners association dues. After my first set of foreclosures, I 
I actually slipped into a pretty legitimate depression. I was getting paid peanuts to drive nearly an hour to work every day to do work I despised on behalf of people I literally could not pretend to care about. The straw on the camel's back was when I started signing the foreclosure and realized I was that guy, you know? I understand someone has to do the work, I guess. There certainly is a lot of money to be made, but it was not for me. I did that job for three months, came home one Friday and told my wife I'd rather be homeless than go back on Monday. By some stroke of luck, I started a stellar criminal defense job within two weeks and all of the heartache that has 100% been worth it. I've won a lot of cases. You have to redefine winning and losing when doing criminal defense because sometimes even a particularly juicy plea is a win in my opinion and never once felt bad about it. For example, I got a guy's plea deal cut from 60 years to 15 years for a string of robbery where the interrogations and confessions were overwhelmingly unconstitutional. Like the interrogations were textbook how not to do an interrogation, Missouri versus Siebert, and stuff like that. Never lost sleep over someone not going to jail. So yeah, every case where I took someone's house away, probably two dozen times for not paying HOA fees, generally $4,000 or less, was the worst case I ever won. FHOAs. Well, as for my humble opinion, I just think lawyers are kind of scared gummy overall. Family law is a little different in that you never really win, per se. You may get more favorable rulings or better terms, but unless the opposing party did something illegal or mind-bogglingly stupid, it's never a decisive win, really. Although I did have a case where my client fought really hard for the dog and then ended up turning him over to a shelter. Frickin' douchebag. The ex-wife received an anonymous tip and was able to get him back quickly. Yeah, I feel like any couple that's having a messy divorce is usually like, how can I hurt them? Oh, I'll take their pet that they love and adore and then get rid of them immediately or put them down. And it's utterly unnecessary in my opinion. I know a lawyer who had a divorce file a long time ago where she represented the husband and the husband fought and fought and fought for this painting that the wife's mother had gifted them. It wasn't valuable or anything, but it was a gift from her deceased mother and he would not settle without it. So she acquiesced and delivered the painting to her lawyer who delivered it to the husband's lawyer for him to pick up. He never did. It's still sitting in the lawyer's office after years, unless she's tossed it by now. He didn't want the painting, he just didn't want her to have it. Summer of 20. 18, I get work regarding what seemed, from the client's description, as a pretty drawn-out and messy divorce case. The husband was my client, and he seemed very adamant that his soon-to-be ex-wife was after every penny he had. Given he seemed to have a fairly high-paying job, it seemed like a pretty common type of case. The city I work in has many instances of this, it has a high cost of living, and a lot of well-paid working professionals in private industry. He was a very well-spoken, amicable guy in his late 50s, and truly seemed like like he'd been taken by surprise and betrayed by his soon-to-be ex-wife. When I actually got the case, however, I was basically floored. His wife was a working professional as well, worked in government. They'd been married for over 20 years and had two kids together and a paid-off house. Before taxes, he made almost three times what she did, not counting his stock options. And yet, she'd contributed equally to their mortgage on every home they'd owned over the course of the marriage. By all accounts, despite a vast difference in income, She'd carried her weight, raised two kids, and worked full-time during the entirety of the marriage. I live and work in Canada. She could have easily raked him over the coals in the divorce if it had gone to court. Instead, it seemed like she'd done everything she possibly could to not have him subjected to that. This divorce had been ongoing for five years before he hired me, and it was basically him looking a gift horse in the mouth over and over, with constant renegotiation on the contract they'd both signed initially, with him skimping on alimony and then debating on lesser terms. He was basically given an inch and tried to take a mile, dragging it out for so long that per divorce law it had to go to court. I almost suspect he did so as a way to try and drag her through the mud, though he may have genuinely been that delusional. I consider it a win only because his ex-wife was adamant about only wanting what was somewhat fair and for it to be over because of the strain it was having on the family. Per the contract he owed her, still a 
about 50k in back pay, but she was content with 15k, which was less than this guy made in a month. I did regret the win, though. She seemed like a very nice woman with the patience of a saint, while almost all of his anger towards her seemed to come from wounded ego. I should also note that though they had two kids together, both were in their 20s by the time I was hired, and custody had never been an issue at all, even for the one who had been a minor when they'd separated. It's like in The Hobbit when the, uh, I guess I'll call him King Dwarf is like, I can't remember, wait, is it Thorin? Is it Thorin Oak Shield or something like that? God, I can't remember, it's been so long. Those movies are old now. But, uh, it's like how he's like, no, the gold is mine, I won't share it with anyone or anything, and, uh, d d greed, greed, man, it, uh, it can ruin you. I did some custody work early in my career and won some cases, more on the merit of my trial skills than on the merit of the parents. The thing with family law work in general is that there is essentially no bar to entry. Anybody with a law degree and a pulse can get a family law practice up and running quickly because there is just an absolute glut of work. What that also means is that 75% of the lawyers practicing family law are clueless and awful. Early in my career, I certainly was clueless, but at the least, I was not awful. There Therefore, in a battle between clueless and awful versus just clueless, clueless usually won. So yeah, I can't recall any specific cases, except to say that fighting over children in court is a terrible thing and basically everyone loses. I regret that entire portion of my career. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Linked in the description below.